Hello and welcome to this video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how I edit my thumbnails for YouTube and how you can do exactly the same using Adobe Photoshop. So before we get into it, you're either going to have the actual thumbnail image that you've taken with your camera, or if you've forgotten to take a dedicated thumbnail image, you can basically take a screenshot from your actual video. And I prefer this method sometimes because sometimes in my videos I make certain faces and when you pause them in the right places, that's exactly what you want for your thumbnail. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a thumbnail without having to take a dedicated thumbnail picture. So now I'm on my computer and I have a video file of something I recorded earlier and that I want to get my thumbnail image from. Like I said, you can have a pre-recorded thumbnail image from another video or even from your camera as in taking a still. But sometimes I like to use my previous video and go in and find the facial expression that I made and that I feel like is going to make the best thumbnail image. So using this software, I will put in the link in the description down below, which is a free software on Windows. You can play this video and also scrub through it to find the ideal face that you want on your thumbnail image. So for example, I'm going to go through the video and find the face that I made that I feel like is going to be best for my thumbnail. Let's go for this. Look how funny this, look how funny this still is. So all you have to do is press file, save image, and then you can just download it onto your normal download file, which for me is always the desktop and press save. So in a few seconds, you have an image, so a JPEG image like this, that you can use as the basis of your thumbnail, which you're gonna create into your YouTube thumbnail. So I can close this video player now and open Photoshop. So when you open Photoshop, you are greeted with this, which is essentially an empty screen with a few toolbars. So we're gonna go through them when we use them. So all I have to do now is get my image and just drag it into the Photoshop program. So by default, right, my image is 1920 by 1080. So that is full HD. So my video I recorded was in 1080p. So when I take a screenshot from it, image by default will be 1080p, which is the best default resolution that you can have for YouTube in my opinion, because anything more on the file size becomes too big. So YouTube has a two megabyte limit for the thumbnail image. Anything more than that, and you cannot upload it to their servers as a thumbnail, okay? So if you're recording 4K or above, make sure that you realize that the screenshot is going to be a lot more than 1080p. So you have to adjust your resolution accordingly. So if you're recording in 1080p, you'll be just fine. So the first thing you want to do is to kind of fix the colors of the image and kind of make it look a bit nicer. So all you have to do is press image adjustments, brightness and contrast. So I like to change the brightness and contrast of my image just to make it a bit nicer to look at. So I like to increase the brightness and reduce the contrast. I like a bit of a flatter look to work with. I just feel like that works better in thumbnails. So now I'm going to press OK. And one more thing that I want to adjust is again, image adjustments and hue saturation. And I like to increase the saturation to around five. So that's going to make it a bit more vibrant. So after you have your image, what you want to do is you want to create a really attractive thumbnail that people want to click on. So you want to kind of get rid of this background because this background is not really adding anything to this video. And by getting rid of the background, you can replace it with something very in your face, very attractive and something that you really want to click on. So the default tool that you're presented with is this move tool, but you want to just go underneath that or press the keyboard shortcut W to get the selection tool. And this selection tool, I tell you, is almost like magic. What you want to do is just select your character or your face or your whole body. So as you can see by dragging from my head down below, the algorithm works really well to notice the difference in edges and it kind of selects only what you really want it to. And it's really good at this. So I'm just gonna drag all the way down. And as you can see, it's detected the edges very well and it's missed out this bit here. So all I do is just click on it. And it's really that simple. If you have the new version of Adobe Photoshop, then they have improved the selection tool so much. Now, in order to refine the edges, because it's not going to be perfect, you have, if you look carefully, you can see a plus sign. So the plus sign means you can add towards your selection. And if you hold Alt on the keyboard, it's a minus sign. So if something that you do not want to include, let's say, for example, this bit here, I don't want to include, I press the negative sign by holding Alt, and I can get rid of that in the selection. So for example, it missed a bit of my ear, so I just press plus and grab here and a bit here. So now I'm just refining the edges a little bit, but it did a very good job. So you don't really have to worry about too much. I remember doing this on a Photoshop program years ago and it was so much more difficult. It used to take ages, but this literally just takes four seconds. So once that's done, what you want to do is go to this column here and unlock the background. So if you double click the padlock sign, 
it will come up with this prompt saying new layer. I mean, you can name this layer. Let's name it actually me. So me. So that will be the layer name me. And now the background's unlocked, it will allow you to do a few things. So if you want to make a really high quality thumbnail, I suggest that you refine this even further. So if you press right click, you can press refine edge and you can add some smoothness here. So I'd probably add like 21 and maybe a bit of feather and increase the smart radius by a few pixels and you press OK. What that does is kind of just smooths out the edges a little bit and when you get rid of the background, it will just make your me layer, which is your layer with your face or your body, a bit smoother. So the next thing you want to do is press right click again and press select inverse. So this actually grabs exactly what you don't want to grab. So it grabs the background. Right? And you can see the selection tool has changed towards the background, so it's everything excluding you. The next thing you want to do is just press delete on your keyboard and voila, your background is gone. It's literally that simple. Now, in order to replace our background, we want to get a really nice background that really enhances the video or really separates the foreground, which is you, from the background. It's very important that you have images that are not copyright. If you just go on Google Images and get any old images, chances are that someone owns that image and you don't really want to use that as your thumbnail because you might get a copyright strike in the future and it's it's also good to get into the habit of always using copyright free content because you never know when you have a copyright claim against you. So this is a great website called pexels.com and it allows you to grab a lot of free stock photos that are completely royalty free that you are allowed to use as the background of your YouTube thumbnails. So as you can see they have a variety of different backgrounds that you can use, different pictures, even videos. So it's a great place for stock footage and it's completely free, no charge whatsoever. There is a lot to choose from. So I'm just going to go for a random one and press colors and see what kind of video background that I want to use for this thumbnail. And looking around, there is a lot to choose from. I, I kind of want something with a nice little gradient. And so it will emphasize the foreground, which is going to be me for this thumbnail. So I mean, this is nice. I like this. So this is my background image for this thumbnail I have decided. So all you do is just press free download and it will download again to your default download folder, which for me is the desktop. One thing that you should make sure is if the picture that you've gotten has enough resolution. So you want to have a lot more than 1080p. So as you can see, this is a lot more than 1080p just because you're going to end up stretching the image. And if you're working with a high resolution image, it will become less blurry in the end. So like before, all we do is just drag it into our Photoshop window and it will place it on like this, which is a bit weird if you're new to Photoshop, but all you have to do is literally just take the corners and just open it and stretch it out how you want it to. And then when you're happy with that, press click. So as you can see, it's just the background. And in order to get you back on the front, all you do is just drag under me. So you can rename this file as well if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it for now but me should be on top and the background should be the back, right? So right now you can see that the thumbnail has changed a lot from what we had before, right? But we can improve the thumbnail a lot more. So what I want to do now is to add a blur to the background to even increase the separation between the foreground and the background more. So all we do is press on the actual background image from this column. We go to filter, we go to blur and then Gaussian blur. And this allows you to blur your image a lot right so this is with no blur and lots of blur so there's a lot of degree of blur that you can do if you go too much you're just gonna end up with squares so definitely don't recommend that but you can decide if you want to have your background image actually visible like right now you can kind of make out there is the sky and the sea but if I go f for over 20 you kind of lose that perspective and you can't really tell and it becomes a really nice gradient that you can use as a background and no one will know what that image is so let's go somewhere in between somewhere around here so we decided that's going to be our background we press ok now the thumbnail is coming together right but we want to increase the emphasis on our character more all we do is go to our character me we go to blending options and there is a number of options that we can use in order to increase the emphasis on our character and really make that thumbnail pop. So I like adding drop shadows. So well, this is what happens when you add a drop shadow. As you can see, it gives that nice professional separation between the foreground and the background. You can even change the angle of the shadow. So you really have almost limitless control over the way your thumbnail looks. 
So I'm just going to leave it like that. You can have an outer glow. Now, outer glow is quite nice in order to, you know, give that typical YouTube clickbaity thumbnail outer glow, like wow, like, like halo effect. So once you go to outer glow, you can change the size of the glow. You can change the color of the glow. So white usually works all the time. Uh, you can increase the size of the glow. You can change the spread. I will just leave that. And you can even change how noisy it is. So if you really like that kind of old Microsoft Paint look, you shouldn't do that, but you could do that. There's also so all sorts of stuff that you can do. You can even have a stroke, which is a basically a border around your image, but I wouldn't recommend that in this case, so I will switch that off. So as you can see now, by selecting the selection tool, you can move your image around. So you can kind of make it quite comedic by just putting your face here. If you wanted to, you can go for this side you know that side but usually because the arms are cut off here it makes more sense to go to this side so i will leave it like this in the corner as you can see from my facial expression this is going to be more of a fun comedic type of video so i'm gonna to have to on the spot make up a video title so this is where it's important to have oftentimes text in your thumbnail in order to you know sometimes just an image is not that catching sometimes you want to have a text right so you want the text to be quite short and snappy and also very eye-catching. So you're putting me on the spot now, but I'm going to think of some things like how to dance, if I could spell. So all you do to add text is you press the T button or as a keyboard shortcut, you can just press T and you just click anywhere and you can start typing. And you can even change the font here, but this is my favorite font I'm going to use for now, but you can actually change the font. So I'll actually change it to impact. I can change it back to my favorite font or i can just change it to berlin sans all sorts of things and you can have control if you go here over the font size over the spacing over the the height of the text and if you don't want to make changes you just press the cancel button you can go back to your default text so how to do a capital dance right and press tick and then I want to increase the font so that is a lot more legible especially sometimes you have to realize that thumbnails can appear very small on certain computers so you want the text to be as legible as possible so I'm gonna open like that so how to dance that is looking like a thumbnail that you would actually probably click don't I this thumbnail is almost finished so what I want to do now is to add a bit more emphasis on the text so like before, you can add a drop shadow to the text. You can add an outer glow. So probably not going to go for glow unless let's try white. No, let's not go for a glow. I like having a stroke on my text because it really separates the text from the background and it makes it really legible. So yeah, here we are. Pretty much quite happy with this thumbnail, how to dance. Now, if I posted this as a video, I'm sure some of you will click on that. Am I right? <laughs> All you do now when you're happy with the thumbnail, go to file, save as, go to the desktop because I like saving everything to my desktop and you want to change the file format to .jpeg because YouTube prefers JPEG and you can just name it thumb1 and you press save and this option comes up and I'll just leave it normally. 11 is a good quality amount to have and it gives you a preview of how much it thinks the end file is going to be in terms of kilobytes so that's around 0.4 megabytes so we know it's under 2 megabytes it should be fine we press ok and voila in a few seconds we have a final thumbnail picture that we can open with you know any software and what youtube will read but also just before i finish the video make sure you save your project file as well so it'll be file save as desktop as a psd file so psd files basically allow you to go back and change the text and background and stuff if your thumbnail is not doing good you can change the text you can change your main picture you can change the background and sometimes your videos do a lot better after that so that was my video on how i edit thumbnails for my YouTube channel and how you can do it too. I hope this was a very easy step-by-step -step beginner's guide into doing so. Leave a comment down below if this helped you and if you want more videos on these kind of tutorial type videos. And as always, thank you for watching.